Okay. So let's start. Uh, good evening. So uh, my name is Ming Pham, and I'm an engineer at Facebook. And thanks for uh, inviting, inviting me today to share with you guys about a small library that I have used in one of my side projects. And this library has helped me a lot uh, since then. So let's look at an example on what this library can do. So let's say you are trying to build a social network and uh, you need to implement a features where user can go in and like a post. And you are the front end engineer for this app and you decided to use React plus Redux for this. A pretty popular uh, choice nowadays. And so uh, you might have come up with something like this for your Redux store. So uh, you have something like a store with a post, a list of posts. And the post is just a dictionary of like uh, the post IDs and met to some metadata. And in this case, your metadata contains some like like by information, which is just the user IDs of users who had liked this post. So let's say the user click like on the post. What kind of changes we need to make to our data models so that it can be reflected? So if you have been using Redux for a long time, so you might be comfortable with looking at this code and you might understand what it's doing. So firstly, you are trying to uh, clone the original store and then you override the post by uh, cloning the post itself and overriding the specific post and then adding the new user IDs there. So this is a lot of code and the reason we are trying to do this is because you don't want to change the original store directly because then React will not know how to re-render re -render your apps. Uh, so that's why Redux always requires you to clone the original objects instead of directly changing it. But with all the benefits of Redux, this still looks a bit clunky to me. Like you are doing very, something very simple, but like this logic is like 10 lines of code, uh, which is not that great. And your data model is not that complicated, actually. So introducing Emer. Uh, this is going to solve the problems of updating and deeply nested values. So um, right there is like the same exact logics written using this library. And it's just three lines of code. So it's like 66% uh, productivity improvement right there. And uh, so what Emo Expo is that just one function can produce. And it takes in an object and the second parameters is just what kind of changes you want to make to this object. So you can think of a draft, uh, something like the clone objects of the store itself. And after this body function returns, and it will not modify your store, but return a new object with your modifications. So I love productivity. So that's make me like really like about this library. And this library is like, it's no surprise it's so popular because uh, of the friendliness. So it has like 14,000 stars on GitHub and one of the React core teams had a very high praise about this library. So what is immutability? Immutability means that you never change the object and instead you just, uh, when you want to make a change, you just make a new object with the modifications. And it turns out that React really loves immutability. Because if you think about React, what it's trying to do is just figuring out what has changed and then re-render the apps. So by returning a new object every time, React will know that it has to update itself. And immutability, it turns out, is also very great for optimizations. So if you have uh, worked long enough, you know that uh, there are some uh, React, React life cycle like should component updates that can greatly uh, exploit the immutability aspect. So why Emer? Uh, obviously, this is not the only library that is uh, introducing immutability to React. There are a few others library, three at least. But the things I like most about this library is this API, very simple. The API is so intuitive because all the things it's supposed to you is just plain JavaScript and just one half of functions. All the modifications you know is just how you do like modification in like old style JavaScript. 
with your, with your objects, with your arrays, how you add to a list, how you remove from a list. It's so simple. Uh, comparing with another libraries like uh, Immutable JS, uh, the logic also looks like pretty short, but the abstractions and the APIs are not uh, exactly that nice. Uh, you have to learn a bunch of new syntax and uh, some weird syntax, like you want to update something, you have to pass in the key paths. Uh, that is not like really uh, idiomatic JavaScript. So this might lead to a bit of like very steep learning curves for you. Uh, secondly, uh, Emerge.js is 100% type safe. So if you are building a very large scale JavaScript applications, then type is your friends. So uh, in this case, all I need to do is just type the original object, which is the store, and then Emerge is smart enough to figure out uh, what can be changed. Uh, and in this case, I'm using the editor hintings provided by the type safety feature. Uh, comparing with Emiro JS, then uh, there's no, it's not 100% type safe because you are using some dynamic features of the, of the, of the language, which is a uh, key paths here. And there's no way that either Flow or, or TypeScript can know about if it is type safe or not. And finally, uh, email is pretty efficient. Uh, it's a pretty small library standing at like six kilobytes after compression. And surprisingly, it has some pretty advanced features like structural sharing, which is uh, when you try to clone the object, it will not just do a pretty like, dumb clone. It will try to figure out which is the same part, which stays the same between two versions and keep that part, and only create a new modification based on that. So it is great for memory saving. So that's the three reason, reason I like the most about this library. And give it a try. I hope you can enjoy it as much as I am. Thank you very much.